Greetings and welcome to The Place Church. Thank you for joining us in your online seat. You reserved just for worship with us. I want to encourage you to step out in your worship today. If you've never raised your hand before, if you've never sang out loud, if you've never closed your eyes and just focused on the presence of the Holy Spirit, let today be a new and bold moment for you. Set aside all the things in the world that may be distracting you and focus on God's amazing love, grace, and mercy. Sit back, relax, open your heart to receive what the scripture has to say to you today. Good morning. Why don't you lift up your hands right where you are? And let's just bless the Lord together. Psalms 103 and 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and go. to participate in the offering today. Jesus draws us from the margins into a great feast. He draws us out of a crowd to healing. Each day God finds the way that we need to be loved and challenged and then calls us to minister to others in warm hospitality, healing mercies, and the promise of resurrection and new life. We respond to this marvelous call through our giving this day. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. There are multiple ways in which you can give at The Place Church. By mail to The Place Church, Post Office Box 217276, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28221. By texting to 84321, follow the prompts and select The, per the Place Church or visit our website for additional information at www.theplaceumc.org. Let us pray. 
We give these gifts freely. We receive these gifts gratefully. We dedicate these gifts to the work of our congregation and community, serving human wholeness, caring for others, upholding spiritual freedom, and welcoming the stranger, loving one another. May these gifts and the work of our hands and hearts weave a tapestry of compassion and action, faith and fellowship, hope and wholeness. With joy in our hearts, we give joyfully. Hallelujah. Amen. You made me deep in my despair. You showed me you will never leave me there. You claim because I was made for so much more. I am your child. And I'm worth fighting for so heavy. With the weight of my mistakes, you carried me and refused to let me sink. Oh, down the pressure was meant for me to soar. I am your child, and I'm worth fighting for. me from your love and there's so much more still worth fighting for now moving my faith and not the sight towards victory about the power of your might you're straightening out my path you're opening every door I am your child we're fighting for eyes have been seen, no. ears have been heard, no, 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 no. all you have planned for me, and nothing, no, nothing, nothing can separate, Ooh, separate me, me from your love when there's so much more, still worth fighting for eyes have been eyes seen, have been ears seen. have been heard. Ears have been So much more, yeah. still worth fighting for. And that's why I'm pressing towards the mark. So because the calling on my life is worth fighting for. I gotta keep my eyes stayed on you, Jesus. So because the peace it brings is worth fighting for. I'll be faithful. To my wife and children, so because my family Ooh. is worth fighting for. Though this world is not our home, so because your kingdom here Ooh. is worth fighting for. I got a mansion over in glory. So
from your love when there's so much more still worth fighting in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I greet you from the Place Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we are so happy that you are here with us online to worship God in spirit and in truth. In times like these, we need each other. Uh, a few weeks ago, I talked about being my brother's keeper, and then last week I talked about the unnecessary miracle. But today, I just want to remind all of my brothers and sisters across the world that we need to hold on to God and we need to hold on to each other. So as we go to God in prayer, as we prepare for worship, I just want to know, are you willing to reach out and help someone the way Christ helps you? Merciful God, we come to you as humble creatures, realizing we have fallen short, realizing at times we are consumed with fear, realizing that we are sinners saved by grace. So on this day, as we reflect on your word, allow our hearts to be open, allow our hearts to be pricked, allow our souls to be transformed or renewed, revived, restored. In Jesus' name, amen. Today I want to read uh, from Matthew's, the 14th chapter, verses 22 through 33. And the NIV reads like this. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples go into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake, and when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Truly, you are the Son of God. Here, Peter did the right thing when he stepped out of the boat. He obeyed Jesus. And when he started to sink, he did the right thing again. He called out, then reached out for help. In our individualistic culture, we should obey Jesus and, if necessary, reach out for help. So I like to use for a subject title, reach out a hand in two directions. Reach out a hand in two directions. Sometimes life will give you challenges. In 1995, a killing heat wave left 739 people dead in Chicago. Recently, scientists studied that natural disaster to see if there were any lessons to be learned that might save people in the future. Uh, climate to disasters, the one 
of the largest cities in the world, Chicago is often called a town because it consists of many small neighborhoods where people of various economic and ethnic backgrounds congregate. One thing was obvious after the disaster. Many of the deaths took place in the poorest neighborhoods where there was little or no air conditioning. Air conditioning saves lives. Air conditioning saves lives. But did this mean that those who were poor were automatically doomed to suffer? As it turned out, two communities, Englewood and uh, Auburn Gresham, side by side in Chicago South Side, which had similar poverty and similar ethnic backgrounds. Nevertheless, Englewood had one of the highest death rates, while Auburn Gresham was one of the lowest. Further studies showed that even without taking the storm into account, Auburn Gresham's residents lived five years longer than Inglewood. What was going on? Simply this, people were out on the sidewalks of Auburn Gresham. There were stories in their communities and local people shopped there. There were restaurants, communities, centers, and, and very important churches. All this meant that people went to places where they were recognized each other, knew each other, and if someone wasn't there, missed them. As a result, during the heat wave, people in places like Auburn Gresham checked on each other. Church members looked in on other church members. If folks in the community had no air conditioning, required fresh water, or were struggling medically, someone else knew about it and took actions. By contrast, people who lived in places like Inglewood had no stories, restaurants, or community centers. Their neighborhoods had been abandoned by businesses, people stayed at home, and they did not know each other. No one checked on those who were really suffering. The implication is that being church, being community, being concerned, and caring about each other saves lives. When someone reached out a hand for help, there was someone there to lift them up. As was the case, for instance, with the Apostle Peter in the stormy water, sinking beneath the water, the waves and the water, with Jesus close at hand. Last week, the gospel passage involved the feeding of the 5,000. And you may remember that the apostles seemed to, to grasp there was, was a larger community available to help in times of emergency. They were quick to point out to Jesus that, that, that the impending disaster of feeding a multitude could, could be handled by the people of faith. Just send the hungry folks to the nearby village and they will be fed. But Jesus, somebody say, but Jesus. But Jesus wanted them to understand that the help could come from them. They, the apostles, the church, were the community of faith from which help can come. In the end, Jesus reached out to help the multitude because of his compassion. After the meal, Jesus sent the apostles across the sea to Galilee in a boat. While he dismissed the crowd, then Jesus went up on the mountaintop to pray. 
Remember that in the first place, he had been seeking seclusion following the murder of John the Baptist. Now he was at a time alone. But a storm, but a storm has risen, much like one we are facing today, the pandemic, COVID-19, our country, our community, our storm. Do we have a helping hand? Do we trust that same old hand of Christ Jesus? But a storm has risen and the apostles were rightfully afraid. Even in our day with, with networks of safety and advanced weather predictions and instant communication, storms can still catch recreational crafts unaware, leading to capsizing, sinking, and death. However, fearful the disciples were at their situation in the storm, they were even more afraid when they saw a figure walking toward them across the waters. Was it a ghost? Fear. Fear to stand for right over politics. Fear. It's safer to accept a lie versus pushing for the truth. Fear, more afraid of the unknown than the truth. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and self-discipline. Second Timothy 1 and 7. In his obedience, God will give grace and mercy to reassure his people. Listen, listen, listen. I want you to hear this. Jesus, however, spoke words of reassurance, and here is where Peter is to be com commended. Sometimes we need to have a little faith. In response, Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Seriously? Now, come on. Now, y'all have to just work with me a little bit. If you've ever been out on the storm, if you were ever a sailor, if you've ever been on Lake Norman when the storm was bad, you really just want to get to shore. Seriously? Is it? Is that what you or I would have said? Might we not first call out to Jesus to save us before we would suggest that we would be willing to walk on the water with him. The Apostle Peter comes in for some criticism in, in the gospel and probably from many pupils for doubting Jesus and for denying Jesus after his arrest. Even though in a moment, he will begin to sink and call out to Jesus, Lord, save me, and will be lightly scolded for having little faith. I think he deserves all the credit in the world for volunteering to walk on the stormy seas with, his, with this figure who has stepped across the waters toward him in the early morning, and Jesus said, come, and he went. Really? He said the right thing, save me. That's Jesus' name. You know, Yahshua, or Joshua, means the deliverer. He saves, he rescues. And I didn't see anyone else climb out of the boat. I didn't see anyone else wanted to step toward Jesus. So immediately following this, Jesus calmed the storm, causing even more amazement among the disciples. Truly, you are the Son of God, and their joint declaration may be an important step for them and for us. Because at some point, you need to know for yourself in recognizing as a, 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 a fellowship that Jesus reigns, we recognize our relationship with each other. 
and hopefully also come to understand that the people of Christ Jesus, we are to reach out to others on the stormy seas of life and save each other. Call to mind how we began talking about how community that has network such as churches has a higher percentage of surviving during natural disasters, well, whether or not you agree about why there is a climate change, many people are beginning to agree the climate is changing. We are seeing many natural disasters Areas that have formerly been safe are now endangered. Some of you under this time of house arrest, COVID-19, scared, crisis management, change for the worse. I'm just saying reach out to God and Christ. Reach out in faith. My people, reach out as the people of faith we are responsible for each other, toward each other, and beyond toward the folks who share our community with us. Unlike Jesus, we can't control the storm, but we can step forward in faith as Peter did. Peter had the faith to get started and recognize that he could, do, he could not do it on his own. In times of storm, in times of trouble, in times of struggle, we need to reach out to each other and pull each other up. While we continue to hold on to Christ Jesus, we need to reach out in both directions. Ah, uh, don't fall. Don't, don't, don't fall. Don't fall by yourself. Don't, don't fail to reach out a hand to Jesus for help. And don't fail to reach out a hand to a sister or brother to help in time of need. Hmm. Creating and maintaining the network of community is the way we save each other when the storms of life are raging. If it's, it's a way we can, it's, it's the way we are involved in Christ. It's the way we demonstrate Jesus' life to tell somebody you are worth fighting for. To encourage somebody that you are worth the fight. You met me deep in my despair to show me you would never leave me nor forsake me. You claim me, you told me I'm worth fighting for because I was made for something much more. I'm your child and I'm worth fighting for. Uh, that's why you, 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 you reach out to me. Though, 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 though heavy with the weight of my mistakes, you carried me when, 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 and when I refused to, to give up. You, you carried me and refused to let me sink under the pressures of life. And that's why I'm reaching back for somebody else. Uh, you, you meant for me to soar, and I'm your child. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worth fighting for. And, and that's why my eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard all you have planned for me, for, for me, and nothing can separate me from your love, your, your love when there is so much more still worth fighting for. My brothers and sisters, as I talk to you on this day, I want you to know that we need to keep on. We need to keep on because now I'm moving my faith uh, and, 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 and not my, my sight toward victory by the power of your might. And now I know that you 
are straightening out my past and opening up doors that's been closed. Every door that I, I'm your child and I'm worth fighting for. And that is why I'm reaching back to you because he, he reached out to me. And my brothers and sisters, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard all that God has planned for you. But if you would just start reaching out and touching someone, if you would start reaching out and holding on to Christ as you reach out and hold on to somebody else that's going through. I just want you to know that you don't know all of the promises God has stored up for you. And sometimes we get caught up in the clouds, but maybe the clouds are just coming overhead because you, you reached out to him and then you reached back for somebody else and now we've made a human chain that would bring us through the storm so we would be able to stand and withstand. My brothers and sisters, we need to reach in both directions because God loves us, but he calls us also to love our neighbor. He told us also to love our enemies. He told us also to love those who despitefully use us. So as we reach up to Christ, we need to reach back for those that's in trouble. We need to reach back for those that are broken. We need to reach back for those that need God's love to hold them. I'm just trying to say to somebody today, as, as Peter said, can I, can I come to you? And he said, come. I know some are called and some are sent and some just went, but when God called you, you got to walk out on faith. Sometimes you, you, you disrespect everything else. You're not consumed with the storm. You're not consumed with the issues. You're not even consumed with COVID and everything else that's going on because you reached up to him and you held on to God's unchanging hands and then you decided to reach back because you realized that he had assigned somebody else for you to hold on to as you bring us through the storm. So my God, I'm just saying, hold on to us and don't allow us to be faithless, but allow us to stay straight and narrow on what you have called us to do and to be. My brothers and sisters, it's not only about your salvation, but it's also about your assignment, your calling. It's not only about your struggle, but maybe your struggle are there so that somebody else can see your witness. So as you reach up and keep your hands in God's hands, remember to reach down and grab somebody else because he reached down and picked you up. We need to understand the strength of community. We need to understand the power of networking. And we need to really realize that God made us communal beings so we can support and love one another the way he loves us all. So my brothers and sisters, I invite you now to reach out and grab someone and ask them to come and go with you. I'm not sure of what the end's gonna be, but come and go with me. I know one thing for sure. If God is leading us, it's gonna be better. If God is holding us, we've already won. Let's not be distracted with all of the things around us Let's look beyond the storm and reach out to Christ Jesus and give him my hand. I invite you to come. Will you come with me in prayer? In your households, will you grab everyone's hand and y'all just touch hands, join hearts and say, say this to one another. We need each other. We're family. And then say this to your family. And we need our community. That's why God planted us here. Will you join me in prayer? God of the universe, God of all things, great and small, you who guides your creatures in their great migration, God, hold us. Hold us in a way that we will be able to have enough toughness that when storms and issues come, we won't crack under the pressure. But we will just trust you and keep on walking. Allow us to keep our hands in your hands. Allow us to keep our heart in your hands. Allow us to give you our mind, body, heart, and soul 
so that you would transform us into what you created us for, so that all of our promises, all of our blessings, and the final victory you would allow us to see and receive because we not only held on to you, but we reached back and held on to someone else because we realize in this Christian journey we need each other. So, Lord God, help me to help my family, help me to help my community, help me so that we can help each other to be a better servant of you. So, Lord God, as we think about this text and how John the Baptist early in this chapter lost his head over a promise, but Jesus came and fulfilled our souls of emptiness with your promise. Hold us and keep us and remind us that we need each other for better quality of life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So much more still worth fighting.